welcome back. Uh, since the weather kind of cleared up today, um, decided to do time lapse. This is going to be my episode two. Uh, I really always like the time lapse where it has really kind of intricate clouds rolling by, like a stationary object. So I'm gonna I'm back at the beach, uh, just down the road from my house, and I'm gonna pick a cool rock, a cool looking rock, and I'm gonna take a time lapse of that. Well, one of the setups that I'm gonna use. So I'm using a. Uh, 10 to 20 millimeter wide angle lens on this uh, Nikon D500 that I have here. Um, I'm using a Manfrotto uh, Element tripod. It's a little aluminum tripod. It's super awesome. Folds up real nice uh, and compact. Continuing on, I have this Pixel uh, receiver on top. It's a wireless receiver. Pretty easy. It's got a light. You can change the buttons. You turn it on and off. Uh, it's got a cable. Now this is pretty sweet. You can buy different cables based on what camera you have. So you can go um, Sony, Canon. Uh, imagine there's a Pentax cable, stuff like that. So really this receiver will work with multiple different cameras. So today I will not be using my D3000, unfortunately. I would really like to use it for this, but I'm, it does not have a time-lapse function built into it, nor does it have a port to plug any kind of trigger in. Like I said, this is from 2009, so it's, it's a little dated. One thing I will say that's pretty sweet though is this 10 to 20 millimeter camera or 10 to 20 millimeter lens that I have on my D500 right now has the same filter thread as my Sigma 17 to 70. So if I want to, I can use the same ND filter on both of these, which I might end up, I might play around with how it looks once we get down to the beach and see what exactly uh, I, if, if I want to zoom in a little bit more than the 20 millimeters that this offers, I can switch over to the lens I was using yesterday and uh, and kind of zoom into a you know a rock or a focal point that I'm looking to to, to show. Right now I have the kind of uh, mental dilemma of where exactly to put the camera. So it was low tide about three hours ago, the tide's moving in. I want to get one of these rocks and these coral things that I'll show you here in a second. I want to get one of those in the picture, but uh, I also don't want my uh, either a my tripods getting getting submerged for too long because obviously salt water is not good for them, and b I don't want any kind of splash to splash up on my camera. Right now, I'm thinking of doing this area out here. We'll see something along those lines looks good to me i might zoom in on that rock over there get some of these these clouds these big gloomy clouds kind of coming over and we'll see um one thing i did want to do is i wanted to show uh a little bit more of the coastline over there the the okinawa kinbu bay coastline but we'll i'm not sure if that's going to work out from this vantage point because my son is on this pier the sun's on the pier fishing, so I want to still be able to keep eyes on him. So right now I'm going to go through the, the kind of meat and potatoes of this video. Because this is mirrorless, I can kind of demonstrate a little bit better than on the DSLR. So I'm going to show you real quick how I'm going to compose this and how I'm going to figure out what exactly I want to take a picture of. I do like that rock, but I don't like how it's composed. Obviously, I'm going to go ahead and use my rule of thirds. You probably can't see this that well. I'll, uh, I'll record this so you can kind of, I can play the video back later. But right now I'm going to set up something like that. I'll dial down. So right now it's probably hard to see, but I'm getting a set in, or I'm getting these little uh, like tick marks or these cross hatches. That's telling me that whatever, that part of the picture is gonna be overexposed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my aperture. So I'm actually going to widen the aperture out quite a bit on this one. Uh, this is a histogram, which I can kind of talk through if anybody's interested in that, just let me know. But I'm thinking F8 is going to be the magic number for this. And right now, it's looking pretty good on that rock. I'm not wild about the uh, horizon being dead center. Usually, so if you have kind of a tip for this is if you have, I should have probably covered this in the landscape uh, class yesterday, but the, the, the kind of rule of thumb is to uh, 
put the horizon on either the upper one third or the lower one third, depending on if you have a really cool sky or if you have a really cool background. So right now I'm kind of torn. I really like the foreground or like the, the rocks and stuff like that. And I think the sky is gonna end up being really cool too. I might actually spin it over just a hair, just so I can kind of catch the sun going down. Actually, no, we're gonna take it back over here. We're gonna leave it there and uh, see how the sun's, I think that's gonna be good right there. So I'm gonna bring it up, so I think the clouds are gonna be good. Leave it something like that, have the kind of rocky pier stuff going on. Nope, I'm gonna leave it wide open. Okay, or uh, zoomed all the way out. So I ended up dropping my shutter speed just to kind of blur out those waves a little bit more and get that motion in the video. And then I increased my aperture to give me a little bit wider depth of field, also to get the correct exposure overall. So once the settings are set in the camera, that's how it's gonna record the time-lapse video. After that, I hit the AF on button to focus on my focal point, and then I actually go shift it out of automatic focus into manual just so it doesn't try and focus breathe. So there's a problem with time-lapse videos is as it's taking the pictures, it's trying to focus between each frame. And once it's sped up, you can actually see it kind of flickering in and out as it tries to focus between all those pictures. Once that's all set up, you're basically ready to go. All I'm gonna do next is just gonna go in, hit my menu button, this one's set up to shoot a frame every five seconds for the next 25 minutes. It is gonna exposure smooth, which means it's gonna try and even out the exposures between all of the next frames, just so it doesn't have a drastic change between if the clouds go away or they come back or if it gets bright or whatever. It's gonna try and smooth them out so they all kind of flow together. All right, so now I have the Z6 over there kind of trucking away. I'm gonna come back up here, get it to D500. I'll find a different perspective or different vantage point and uh, get get that one going. And then once those two are kind of cooking, recording video or pictures, I'll grab uh, my iPhone and do the same thing with that. For location selection for this guy, I am gonna put it in a similar spot. I'm gonna move it up on the beach a little bit because I think in the next 20 or 30 minutes, I'm gonna rut, slowly lose beach because the tide's coming back in. Because this lens is so wide, I'm gonna be able to get the end of that pier over there, which is kind of hard to see, and then probably to about where these ugly, ugly power lines and poles are. So I'm gonna set it up, probably something a little like that. So for the D500, I'm gonna throw a six-stop ND filter on there just to kind of. Uh, give myself the flexibility to slow the shutter speed down a little bit more and get uh, the, that, like I said, that blur of the ocean. 